we would like to start uh, with a question mark, which is, are you ready? We, you, ourselves, and everybody uh, in the room uh, to face the future with more creativity and optimism. It's not easy nowadays. And before we start, uh, my question would be, what made you smile recently? The reason why I'm asking it is because when we smile, we, we can access really very easily to new perspectives, to be more creative and optimist. So what made us smile, this is it. Something that I uh, found uh, recently and I really enjoyed a lot, having uh, a crow and, and, and the big guy, uh, the big dog uh, playing together, uh, looking at each other. And it really, I, I, I found it really cute. Uh, and uh, you know what, uh, when we talk about creativity, I just would like to ask you whether you're able to find 16 circles in this element, which is, oops, <laughs> something happened. Uh, yeah. it, it, it was supposed to be a nice uh, um, geometric figure. And actually what happened, we showed you only the circles that you were supposed to find. <laughs> nice nice coincidence and nice surprise <laughs> oh let's go further you know what we have vuca you know very well vuca you know that this is something which is very complex and chaotic and what happened is that uh we go beyond vuca we go from uh, VUCA to BANI, which is brittle, brittle, anxious, anxious non-linear, and incomprehensive. So when, but when you think about it, it can be more capacity and resilience building, uh, empathy and mindfulness, uh, being more context and adaptability, and more transparency and intuition. This is not easy when you think about it. It's very easy when you have it on the slide, but it's not easy to, to cope with that. And in fact, is uh, how we can lead uh, in time of a chaos. In fact, what might happen is that we can look at inner self to see what's in, in ourselves. We can look at other uh, people from the emotional and social perspective. And also we can look from the other perspective, which, which is collective intelligence. Uh, and this is something really important. And uh, when we look uh, uh, on our daily business and our daily experiences with top leaders, uh, there is maybe uh, inner focus from the you know, mentoring one-to-one uh, -one perspective or coaching one-to-one -one perspective, less emotional and social intelligence. And on the top of it, the collective intelligence is not very often there yet. And I think it's really important to bear in mind that this is important to have. So Magda, what yes, might happen uh, yes. in terms of, uh, of how so, we can cope with that? Exactly. So we are coping with some technical problem with the presentation. However, we'll do our best. So uh, yeah. why we would like to invite you to fly to the future on the wings of optimism. Uh, I will just say one sentence uh, given by Dwight Eisenhower. Pessimism never won any battle. And this is for me uh, crucial. You know, investing uh, in optimism, you can have a new currency to pay the fantastic future, more optimistic for the people in the teams, for, for yourself and for the leaders. Mm hmm so uh, you can find many definitions of optimism. Uh, uh, however, three key uh, points are crucial. Three strengths, mental flexibility, realistic hope, and future power. I would like to pay uh, attention to what Melinda uh, Gates said, because thinking about positivity, uh, you know, we can say that is a, a passive expectation. Oh no, is a is a mistake. Uh, so uh, this is not superficial, not naive, and uh, not insincere. Yeah, and you know, talking about future power and realistic hope, is that when I uh, lead with uh, Magda different webinars, it's kind of interesting that people uh, are 
a little bit uh, hesitant talking about the future. They, they, it's like uh, Scarlett O'Hara. They, they, they take an attitude. I think about it tomorrow. And in fact, what happens that uh, if we don't do it by ourselves, somebody else will do it for us and will control our futures and our uh, our present uh, times. So this is such an important thing to look at the future power uh, from our point of view and not follow the path of somebody else's. Exactly. Uh, so you see this, uh, this what uh, Melinda Gates said, uh, I has been uh, uh, attaching to this point uh, before. So uh, uh, there is not a passive expectation. This is conviction that we can think that we can do the things better and we can bring the people with us and not wait, as Mariola said, that anybody else will do it for ourselves. Yeah, so optimism, it's really a very active uh, attitude uh, and not uh, being dreamy, but really have a real expectations what is possible and how we can influence the future. So we are working uh, with Mariola based on, on the definition um, of Roche-Martin Institute. Uh, so uh, what is uh, uh, the definition of emotionally intelligent leaders? They sense, they have a sense of opportunities, even if they face some obstacles. So there are three components, opportunity sensing, positive mood and the resilience. Optimistic leader can see the big picture. They have a vision for where they are going and they can bring the people in, uh, in the times of change, especially. And we are facing this chaos uh, coming from uh, Bani, uh, Mariola just mentioned. So mm -hmm. both uh, optimistic leaders have a talent for maintaining and uh, promoting and positive moods. They are uh, enthusiastic and uh, this enthusiasm can be uh, contagious. Uh, they bring humor, energy. They are energy multiplicators. So uh, they are resilient. Very important one, uh, word. Uh, uh, the essence of resilience is to see a benefit in every situation, especially when there are step back. Uh, so, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, yes, Mariola. One more, one more comment, Magda. Uh, P uh, leaders, as we observe uh, uh, them uh, in work, they are very intelligent. They have a lot of different skills and competencies. Uh, they finish different uh, good business schools. So they, they kind of prepared for their businesses. And uh, what comes to uh, uh, after our research and analysis is that the competitive advantage uh, comes from emotional, uh, emotional intelligence, as Magda mentions, and uh, social intelligence. And those elements are really becoming the competitive advantage, advantage uh, which makes people, uh, leaders, more successful than the others. So you see the model of Roche Martin here, uh, leadership performance, emotional and social capital model that is uh, composed by uh, three elements. Mariona just mentioned other perspective, inner and uh, uh, others uh, perspective. So uh, build on on uh, on uh, five pillars. So you have this inner one, self awareness and self management. Inside you can see five uh, emotional competencies. Other uh, per perspective, so social awareness and social skills, and uh, uh, this outside perspective. Uh, uh, so uh, adaptability and inside you have uh, optimism. So one more time, I'm investing to this, checking and uh, doing the analysis where you are with, uh, um, with a capital of optimism. It could be good idea for the starting point. Yeah. So when you look at this model, as Magda mentions again, is here we have three different uh, intelligences that we talked a few minutes ago, which is emotional intelligence, uh, focused more on the inner self, as Magda mentioned, 
There is also uh, other focus, uh, which is more um, social and uh, um, social intelligence and collective intelligence. And also, which is quite important, is also focusing on the job, focusing on what we want to do, which is, for example, self-actualization, which shows leaders uh, how they cope in that uh, respect as well. Right. So, in fact, what happens is very. we were talking about the future a few minutes ago and how important it is to make sure that we think about it, that we analyze it, that we create the future today. And in fact, um, I, I really love this Japanese proverb, which says vision without action is a daydream and action without vision is a nightmare, which means that it's really important to envision the future. And on the other side, it's also important to think how we might invite the future to the present by planning actions which might help us prepare us better for the future uh, different uh, challenges that we might face. Uh, you know Jeff Bezos, this is the guy who very often think about the future and uh, uh, ask himself how to navigate it. And uh, he makes sure that uh, um, the, the way he faces the future is the optim optimal way and very often focus on long-term uh, future, inviting this long-term uh, analysis, um, thinking, planning, perspectives into the future. And what happens with Jeff Bezos and people who enter on this future thinking path is that they invite the future to the present and act as if they were already there which means that a uh, uh, leader might take different actions, different uh, attitudes and develop different skills if he or she knows what she or he would like to do in the future, uh, what kind of role uh, will, be will be given and taken and uh, uh, develop accordingly today to be prepared for, for such a situation. Uh, yes, so there are... Um, if we do it, we can make better decisions, we can transform in a way we want and we control. And we also, what I said, uh, we can practice futures here and now and experiment what works and what doesn't and act accordingly and adapt uh, to what we observe and, and see. So, uh, thinking about the future is to think then thinkable, because as I said before, Amy Webb, the great futurist, uh, she confirmed that people don't like thinking about the future because they might be afraid of thinking about something and think about something which is kind of scary or also very interesting or very encouraging. Uh, I don't know. Uh, people are afraid of different things, even about successes. So it's thinking about what might happen, which is kind of a risky, about uh, what are the growth possibilities, uh, what are the, the collapses and different elements, because then we are better prepared for it. This is um, when we think about work, World Economic Forum, one of the biggest uh, top competencies uh, in the 2025, according to the researchers, will be critical thinking. And critical thinking is very, very important and not very often uh, recognized as the top skill of leaders. Um, so on the top of being emotionally and socially intelligent, critical thinking is really important. Uh, to make sure that we have the whole spectrum of possibilities which allow us to meet uh, what we want. So it's uh, when we think about the future, there are two perspectives, obviously, at least two. One is personal futures, what we as leaders want to achieve, how do we see ourselves uh, within one, two, three years uh, ahead or even 10 years. Um, it, it boosts self-motivation and increases, uh, you know, the energy to achieve it. And from the other side, being a, a top leader, 
we also uh, can think from the um, systemic perspective of an organization and to look uh, from different perspective, perspectives, uh, including different uh, elements of organization itself, but also the competitors, uh, the systems, which in, in influences the organization's uh, activities as such. So um, it's to be strategic from the worldwide perspective. So, so what we think is that it's important to lead beyond VUCA and BANI because we had VUCA, now we have BANI, we can have something else very quickly, I, I'm sure of it. And what might help us to cope with, uh, with the situation that we have and that we might have in the future, uh, according to different researchers, is to be optimistic, to be open, to be playful, um, to experience future thinking and also to play with future scenarios um, of different sorts and also free our mind and feel the future power and be ready to, to, to be with you despite the technical uh, problems that we have and still be optimistic that we got uh, our message through and that you that you are with us um, and uh, I would like to finish uh, our presentation uh, and to leave with you a few questions. What is your value that you can offer to yourself and to others now and in the future? Uh, what, what is your curiosity directed at? Because when you're curious, you, you cope with the fear because curiosity is uh, something which uh, 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 enable fear to be manageable. Uh, what exactly do you need to perform to transition? And what is your hope? What do you hope? And how can you help others to, be, uh, to, to get that hope and to develop that future power that, you, that is in you and in others? So that would be it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Online? So I'll read uh, a couple of questions from um, the uh, virtual uh, attendees. How do how do you help <coughs> employees not only uh, to be optimistic but to translate it in their daily activity? Yeah, it's, it's a very good question, and I really enjoy it because uh, uh, I run recently uh, a couple of webinars, and what happened is that first of all, uh, we discovered to the, together what is the team purpose, what is important to them, how they want, uh, uh, what they see there, and the second part uh, is sense of agency and uh, um, a and acting uh, element. And now it's accountability piece which comes and it's very important to make sure that we uh, look at it uh, on a monthly basis and make sure that people uh, get accountable to each other, accountable to the teams and uh, have clear plans how to develop it because um, you're absolutely right. It's not enough to be optimistic. It's also a question on how to, uh, to have a discipline and how to create something which is tangible and very plan-oriented to make sure that we can implement it. And one of the emotional intelligence competencies, which is self-actualization, enables that. So uh, if a leader know, if leaders know uh, what is their level of self-actualization, they might discover whether they, uh, they have a capacity to do it easily and to get to action and get uh, things done, or from the other side, they, they have less energy and not be very motivated to do it. This is why uh, I, we like with Magda um, this emotional capital um, um, diagnostics because it's very, very wide and it also responds to the situation which is, am I ready to deliver and not only think and feel it, yeah? 
Mm. Just adding what you said, uh, Mariola, and answering this uh, question, in the self-actualization, you have this achievement drive. So responding to the creative challenge and setting goals, you have a passion as well. So sharing this passion, encouraging people in the teams and empower them, this is certainly the key point. Mm. Another question from the audience, if that's okay. Um, mm -hmm. We are all believers in human potential. However, there are some um, beliefs that limit that potential, own beliefs. Um, what would your advice be for um, us to, in, to design a culture that encourages uh, each, each employee to reach his or her potential? Yeah. Um... We are very big fans of uh, Martin Seligman. This is a great uh, psychologist uh, with uh, a great, uh, put, uh, great input into social uh, uh, psychology and social interventions. And there is uh, a great tool which we can share with those who want, uh, which is called ABCD. And this is a tool which enables leaders who are facilitators who, uh, who work with others to help them um, reframe the mindset. To make sure, because uh, at the very beginning, we have our kind of uh, pattern of thinking. Very often it's, it's a negative thinking, uh, bearing in mind the, the conditions that we have right now. And Martin Seligman, helps us and trains our minds to make sure that we know that this is not the only option that we have. So uh, if, you, if you want, uh, just contact Andrea and uh, we'll make sure that you get the, um, the, the tool because I, I, it's, uh, I test it very, very often and it works. And people, it's very easy and simple. And I think that this is what makes it uh, really uh, interesting and helps people to reframe the mindset, bearing in mind that it is okay to have the uh, kind of negative uh, or, um, uh, you know, these limiting beliefs at the very beginning because everybody does, right? Thank you, Magdalena. Thank you, Mariola. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.